All right, next, I'm gonna talk about using parallel compressors. Now, what I normally do when I'm listening back to my track, I wanna make sure I can hear every instrument possible, particularly when the mix gets very dense. Now, it does get dense sometimes when you've got a lot of tracks, you know, and you're doing a lot of drums, you got keyboards, you've got guitars, you got everything going on, and some loops. And in some parts of the song, the song may get a little too thick, and you don't get to hear that, so you have to maybe turn something up, turn something down. Well, sometimes I have to also add this parallel compressor to the vocals as well. Let's say my vocals will be steady, I can get a strong bottom to it, and here's how it works. I'm going to just try it right now, there's one part here, which is my percussion part. Now I'll play this back for you. And here we got two actual loops going on. This Indian type tablet loop, a little bit of like guitar plucks. Now the drums come in along the tabla loop. So we got the drums and the tabla, and they're both pan left to right. As you can see right here. Now along with this track, I have this drum. This is called drum edit, and this is a drum loop right here. Really strong, hard hitting bass drum, a lot of snap and pump on that snare drum. Of course, the hi-hat in there as well. And I'll play them together. Now, sometimes I want to maybe get a little more high-end somewhere in this thing, or just have it so it sits right underneath the other track, which means I want to take this track and make this have a little bit more feel to it. And I already have this effect on here already, which is called this air talk box. And you'll hear it here. Now I'll play without just uh, bypass it. This is bypass. Now hear it back in. Bypass. I'm sort of like trying to keep the high end, harsh sound of it, get it so it's a little bit midi, but still it's got a nice little rhythmic feel to it. So, in order to make this parallel compressor track, I'm going to go in here, click on where it says percussion. I'm going to right click it. And now I get this menu here. I'm going to make a duplicate. Now, the duplicate gives me a choice. I can use the active playlist, which means I'll have the active loops that are in that track will be on this duplicate. I can use alternative playlists as well, in case I wanted to go back and forth and switch between the alternative playlist and the active playlist. I can keep the automation. Um, I can also keep the sentence, the inserts, and the group assignments. So no automation as of yet. I'll make that up myself later on if I want to have some automation. And it says here, insert after last selected track. So I definitely want to put it right next to my other percussion track. I'll press OK. Now it appears right there. And we'll notice they're both here. I'm going to flip it over now. And you'll see them right here. Let's close this a little bit. And they're right there. Percussion and then my duplicate percussion, which is DP1. Now I'll flip back over to my mixer section. And here, I want to add a compressor. I'll use the uh, BF76. I can set the preset, but in this case, I think I'm just going to make my own compression. I'm just going to listen back to it a little bit and get an idea of what it sounds like. It's a little more raw than before, right? but just really hard hitting. So at this point, I just want to bring it down a little bit under the other track uh, with this one. So here it is. Turn off, turn on. That's a little more weight to it. Okay, so now this track has some compression, but it's a little bit heavier. I fixed my compression rate so I like it. Maybe I want to get some more snap in so I can also add a lot more speed to the release. Close this window here. And now I can play with the track. A nice blend of it. So other stuff comes back in. So for example, I go back to the top. I'm gonna have this out. Let's 
got a blend of my original percussion track, which is right here. Now, the other music comes in, I'm gonna bring this one in here. So I don't lose any of that. Say that a little bit. I know here I was in the track. It, it makes, there's more presence to that percussion track. And here, other stuff dies out a little bit. So I'm going to pull back a little bit off it. So, so I add a little more flavor to that percussion track. And if I like it, I can keep it. But sometimes, you know, it's good to check it out, see if you need it, if you're trying to make one other sound in the mix sound a little stronger. Particularly when the track is very dense. That's important. When you got a lot of stuff going on, some stuff does get lost. But we don't want to have it get totally soft or get lost. We just want to make sure it's still heard, but in the track. <laughs> 